Okay, so I hope everybody's doing all right. Uh, this is a little bit of a preview and a critique of the Glover Road diorama so far. Um, as most of you may or may not know, I've been working on locomotives lately, so I haven't really been at the layout actually and done any work on structures or terrain or anything for quite a while now. So I want to get back into it again. And so I got to close out the, the uh, locomotive that I'm doing right now. And that's almost finished. It'll probably be the next upload. And then I want to get back into finishing up these structures and the terrain associated with them. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I want to keep them portable so everything comes off, like even this gate comes off and then the buildings lift off. And So I want to maintain that kind of uh, factor with this layout, right? Like all these buildings are not, like they all come off, right? So like in case i got to take it down, I don't want anything to get ruined, so... So yeah, as it stands, um, you know, there's just the two foot staging here that I like, you know, it uh, serves its purpose, right? As you can see, if I want to run operations, this two foot staging is more than adequate. Um, and as for the feel and, and the look of things, um, it is what it is. Like I say, I laid the track all first before I even built this enclosure. And um, it was just an exercise in track laying, like hand laying turnouts um, I hadn't done in a while. So, and then I sort of decided to turn it into something. And then it began with this idea of, well, I have this sort of urban, you know, to rural kind of feel to it as I went from right to left, right? Um, anyway, so the first building was this BC rail structure, which is sort of a, tribute to the fallen flag of BC Rail, which I grew up with. And then, uh, of course, the Dairy Queen from the 60s and 70s around the school where we went and everybody used to hang out there. This one I custom built or scratch built as well. Like all the buildings here, they're all scratch built because that way I could control the composition better and the footprint of each model to fit the 16 inch deep by eight foot wide module. Um, I'm happy with the color choices. You know, I wanted a variation of muted colors. Like, like what I mean is a lot of white added to all the colors to tone it down a bit to, for scale, light, and, and feel to try to blend things together better with light washes of earth and raw umber, which really does wonders for scale models. Um, as far as this uh, cell tower goes, it's prototypical uh, to... The actual grain elevator at the site. So is this space here, but there's but this area here is actually an open parking lot. But I decided to fill it full of trees. It just wasn't suitable enough for you know doing that kind of look. Uh, so this will just be good for now. I'll just clean up this area here because, like I say, this is temporary. I'll probably move this cell tower and the grain elevator eventually too when I go to the new design. But um, I'm also really happy with the track work. I spent a fair bit of time on it and thought and uh, different layers, lots of different layers of earth and umbers and so on and static grass. Um, I really like the angle of the road, how I have always done dioramas this way. I offset everything. I don't run roads and track perpendicular to the edge of the valance. I stay away from that. I feel that it just looks like more like a realistic slice of the real world when things are done that way. Um, yeah, uh, I'm a little bit not sure about the lighting. The lighting hangs down too low, but it's all the room I have. So I have some LEDs, some thin LEDs. I might pull this one down and mount that because I want to get away from, like I want it to look like this when I'm up closer, the shadow box effect, which I really like, right? It just makes the, the operation way more immersive. I also wished I had a curved valance here in the corner. I like to stay away from that. But this was sort of a shoot from the hip model too. So I'm trying to make the best of what I have right now, right? And sometimes we need to do that. And just try to make the best at what we do and, and carry through with the model building exercise and so on. Because it all matters, you know, like on the next layout, right? What you learn at any stage of uh, the hobby. Um, and everything, like I say, is portable, like this crossing gate platform, um, just 
pops on over a brass rod there and I want to, I've got crossing gates for here too. I want to finish up this intersection. I got plans for a backdrop here and a retaining wall maybe over here with a bush but we'll see how that works out. And then some barbed wire along here to sort of suggest the rural Langley area. Yeah so you know um, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Um, and how it's all panned out. It's a lot of fun to operate and it looks really good with the rolling stock and the locomotives as well. So as a diorama, I think it meets the qualification. Oh, and also I should mention that uh, if I ever build another module again or layout, which I probably will, uh, it's going to be all like this with the uh, valance push rod for turnouts. I don't want to be using my cab control or anything electronically. I know they have their place, but I want to just have uh, the ability to just reach right here manually and throw the turnouts with power routed frogs. So I really like that as well. So that's something I'll stick with on the new design. And the new design is there. If you go back chronologically in the uh, content on the channel, you'll see with the maquette model how I'm planning a new design for the... Uh, Glover Road project. But yeah, right now I'm pretty happy with this. And uh, like I say, um, this is how I want to have it look like the next one too. Like, so the average, I guess, 5'10 height, I'm 5'11. But so I'm a little bit, when I get up close, see how the lights come into view there? I want to fix that. But you can see that the shadow box design is uh, really a nice way to to do a layout like this in terms of uh, immersion because you can control the lighting. The lighting here is only like 12 inches above track level. level. So the models look really good, like all that work you put into painting. Even if they're stock trains and buildings, it just looks so much better. So anyway, thanks for uh, tuning in. And the next upload will be the locomotive that I promised, the MP15, which is almost ready to go. Okay, so you can look for that. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.